Hey, this is Eric. I'm going to talk about attribute joins. In a previous video, I talked about spatial joins in QGIS, and that, as a quick refresher, is a way of giving features more attributes based on where they fall within other features. So, um, this map was made by joining the schools with city council districts and pulling this, the council district number over to the schools and then categorized the schools by that. Um, more often than not, you'll have data that could be spatial but is not spatial. And sometimes you can hook up that non-spatial data to some spatial data and then you have more data to map. So. Um, I have an example here of SAT results. Let's open that up. I'm pulling it in as just the plain attribute table. And I'll show you why. Not not there in the attribute table itself. Um, yeah, this this file, this is the whole file. It doesn't have any geometries associated with it. So it doesn't have the points for these schools. It just has the schools and the scores and some weird S's which we'll have to deal with. Um, yeah, so that's say we wanted to talk about SAT scores by school and map it. You can't do that directly with this file. You have to hook this file up to one that has the geometries for the file for the features. And the way you do it is actually relatively simple. So um, let's open the attribute table back up, actually. Um, OK, so there's the attribute table for the SAT results. Let me open. I'm going to keep using the one that I joined with the city council districts here. So you see that it has the city council district. But the more interesting thing here is that the first column in either file looks like a unique identifier, and it looks like they match. And a quick way to check to see if they do match, remember this one on the left is the schools, this one on the right is the SAT results. Let's check for this one, 01M292. So you can do a quick column filter by ATS code the column on the left and type that in and see what happens. Yeah, so we do have that feature. And check another. Yep, that's in there. Yep, okay, so these are all in here. It's also worth noting that you might be able to do this by school name. It looks like they're it looks like they're not the same. OK, so that's the problem with using names to associate geometries. You're not always going to have an exact match. And with attribute joins, you need an exact match. You need to be able to type it in exactly as it is in the other one and find it. OK, so now that we know that we have a unique code, we can join them up. And you do that by going into the properties for the spatial layer. Go to joins. Click the plus sign. <clears throat> so now you have to pick the layer that you're joining to, the one that you want to get data from. In this case, it's the SAT results. I want to join on the DBN. If I was using the name, I'd have to pick it here. Same here. And just hit OK. And as you see, the features haven't changed. Um, nothing visibly has changed. But if we go back into the attribute table and scroll over to the right, we see a bunch of new columns. 
and a lot of them are null. When they're null, that means they didn't match. So all of these did not match. And that kind of makes sense when you look at the grades. The ones that don't, didn't match are primary schools or middle schools. And they're probably not taking the SATs. Okay. So let's do a quick sanity check. One way would be simply to sort one of these new columns that that will group all the ones that joined with and then split them from the ones that did not join, the nulls. So we have all the non nulls up here and all the nulls down here. And we can just click and scroll up, hold shift and click here, and we see that we selected four hundred fifty five. How many were in the original one? 478. It's pretty good. Um, so you can see the selected number up here and the total number right here. Depending on what you're doing, you might want to try to figure out what happened to those 23 others. Maybe the I they're just not in the schools file. Maybe their IDs are off for some reason. I'm not going to get into that here, but it's worth checking out. Yep, so another way to select all of the ones that actually joined would be to use an expression. So let's try that so you can see how that works. Use the select features using an expression right here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to pick one of the new fields down at the bottom. Um, let's go with school name. And when you want all of the n fields that are not null, you have to say is not null. And you could put this together with the operators, but it's kind of tedious. You'd have to is not. And then I think you just have to type the null unless there's I don't know. I don't think there's a better way to do that. Um, so now I'm going to hit select. And what have we got? It's all the ones we expected. Right? Okay. So now... Um, so we have all of these selected. One thing we might want to do is, um, so we can look at the ones that we selected. We see how they're spread out. With this kind of map, it might actually be interesting just to map schools where we have SAT records. Um, It definitely seems like there are gaps, but that might just be gaps of where there are high schools. But say we wanted to map based on, if we wanted to do a quantitative map based on um, the SAT scores, we could go into the properties and style, turn off categorize, go to graduated, and pick a column. So the problem here is we don't see the column that for any of the SAT scores here. And why is that? If we go to graduate it, categorize rather, we see those columns, number of SAT test takers, average scores, um, but we don't see it undergraduated. Let's go back to the attribute table. And if we scroll on over, um, 
we see that these numbers are aligned to the left and these are aligned to the right. These are actually recognized as numbers by QGIS. These QGIS thinks are strings. That can be annoying. So, um, so we're going to want to fix that by converting those strings into numbers. The way you do that is through the attribute table. You have to turn on editing mode and then go to the field calculator. And I'm going to, um, we only want the selected features, the ones that are not null. We want to update, say, critical reading average score. And we want to use a conversion to int. So you see here, it converts one string to an integer. That string can be a field. So if we scroll down, pick our field, we're doing the critical reading. And this has a left paren, so we want to make sure that we add a right paren at the end here. Let's hit OK. Okay, so we got an error. Um, cannot convert s to int. And this is because the data is a little weird, because it has s's here. It would have been better if they were just nulls. Um, in the original data, s, what are you supposed to do with s, right? Um, so we can't convert s to integer. OK. OK. Um, rather, cancel out of it. So we need to remove these s's. One way, we can, one way we can do that is by going back up to the select features and say, um, we're doing the critical reading one. Say, is single quote s. So we select the features where the average critical reading score is s. And then down here, we want to remove it from our selection rather than select it. And you see that we no longer have these selected. OK, so I, just to quick recap, we selected the features that we wanted to change the number for, change the string to a number. That didn't totally work out, so we had to remove some by going back in here, writing a new expression, and changing the select. So removing them from the selection. I'm done with selecting by expression, so I have a bunch of things selected. If you look up here, we now only have 400 selected. We had 450 something last time. Anyway, we're going back to the field calculator. We're only updating the selected features, updating, picking this one, and we can go into our recent expressions and redo what I was doing earlier. So we're taking this field, which is this column here, or this column here, rather, the critical reading average, and turning it into an integer instead of a string. Okay, so that didn't work either. And the reason why that didn't work is the whole column is a string. Um, and there isn't really a great way in QGIS to change the type of the column. So we actually need to just create a new one. And I'm going to call it reading average. And I want it to be an integer. If it had any decimal point or any numbers after the decimal point, you'd want a real number. 
Okay, so now we're adding a new field. We're taking the field critical reading average score, and we're converting that to an integer. Now when I hit OK, you see that we have a new column, reading av. Wherever the critical reading score was not null and not s, we have the same value, but as a number instead of text. Okay. I know that was a lot of steps, but sometimes that's what it takes to get the data to the point where you can actually use it. All right. Why did it disappear? Stop editing and save. Let's open the attribute table. I don't think I broke it. I'm going to zoom to the layer. Really? <laughs> okay, so for some reason, when I change this, oh, I see the style is broken. That's why it disappeared. Okay. So I'm going to hit apply, and my points should come back. Yay, okay. Um, now, if we wanted to, we could do a graduated map based on the reading average. And I'm just going to, sure, we can use blues, and classify, and hit apply. And they're selected right now, so you can't tell that we styled it, so I'm going to deselect. And now you can see the higher scores versus the lower scores. Um, yeah, so we see, let's open the attribute table one more time. Remember in the previous video, we added this council district column. We did that using a spatial join. And in this video, we added these from the SAT results, and then we created our own new column that's a number over here. Yep, so that's how attributes, attribute joins work. Hope you find it helpful.